Um, dear students, first, I would like to welcome all of you at the Winter Camp 2020 organized by Abu Dhabi University and um, enrichment program RISE at ADEC. The title of the camp is Entrepreneurship, how to start your own business and um, how to take control of your future. You will go through six modules and we are going to equip you with all the necessary skills and knowledge related to how to start your business. Starting from how to pick up an innovative idea and also how to um, come up with the strategy, mission and vision of your idea. And then later on, we will be talking about the different legal forms that you could undertake for your business, for your new idea. And then how to market, how to market it, how to create a niche, how to create a branding for your business. And then after that, how to manage it. And finally, how to make it sustainable, eco-friendly and healthy. We are going to also divide you into groups and teams so you can work together on coming up with different ideas, different innovative ideas for your projects. And then finally, at the last session, you are going to present those ideas and there will be winners. The professors at Abu Dhabi University are going to deliver all modules and are going to be there for you during the Winter Camp 2020. So I would like to congratulate you. I would like to tell you that you did the right decision of joining this camp. We are going to do your the best in order to make it very interesting to all of you. Um, also, all of you, you will receive a certificate of participation from Abu Dhabi University. So you will learn a lot. The professors will equip you with all the technologies and the skills and knowledge to start up your own business. And at the end, we will all celebrate the success. So thank you for joining. Again, we welcome you at Abu Dhabi University Winter Camp 2020. And now I am going to introduce my colleague, Dr. Petra Turkoma, the Assistant Professor of Management at the College of Business at Abu Dhabi University, which will take you through the first module, how to come up with innovative ideas. Thank you, students. I wish you a very fruitful and productive winter camp and see you at the last session. Thank you and bye. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shereen. So my name is Dr. Petra. I'm from Finland originally, and I'm running the Innovation Center at the Abu Dhabi University as well. So innovation, entrepreneurship, these kind of topics are very close to my heart. And I think this is really uh, the future. So what has really changed now recently is that once we ask our students, what do they want to do when they graduate? Quite a large portion of the students are saying they want to start their own business. And this is a really big change uh, from before, once we only used to have um, uh, students want to go for the government, get a good paying uh, government job, or maybe go for some of the companies. But these days, really, this is really um, a big change. And uh, a lot of the students want to do their business. So we'll be talking about this transition a little bit. What are the drivers for this entrepreneurship? and why is it also so high on the whole national agenda for the UAE? So today uh, we have the module one, kickstart your business. But before I go into this module one, I will talk to you a little bit about the program as a whole. And I will also introduce this Mentimeter, as you can see in the top right hand corner. This is the tool that we'll be using here for our interactions. So some welcoming words and the objectives of the camp. So obviously we're talking about the entrepreneurship and upon completion of this course, you will have the skills to start a business. So really do it for the real. And there's a lot of support uh, instruments here in Abu Dhabi and in Dubai. So it's actually very easy 
to go online and start your business in a matter of yeah minutes i would say maybe half an hour it will take you if you have all the documents available and the very important thing is the confidence so we have a lot of times the students ask when is it a good time to start your business so should you start it when you're young and you have less to lose or should you start it when you're more experienced and i always say that it, it depends there's no right answer like there's no archetype for an entrepreneur as well not all the entrepreneurs are like in the movies young tech savvy guys there's a lot of older women who are entrepreneurs they can be family businesses there's so many different ways to do it but yeah let's i also leave you with these two questions we will be talking about them in a little bit but one is that why is entrepreneurship important think about it yourself a little bit like why is it important for you on your individual level and why is it important on national level also then think a little bit about your expectations for this camp so why are we really here and what do we want to achieve personally in the end of this course so this is a little recap of the camp. I also said there was a question and question Q&A. So each of these live sessions will be one and a half hours. So 1.5 hours of this online. And then we would expect you to work between the modules on your project as well. So with going on, we talk about the kickstarting your business. We talk about legal requirements for businesses. So what is the legalities about starting the business? the kind of practical questions you have to look into. We also talk about ethics, business ethics there. That's a very important part of this. We talk about go-to-market strategies, marketing. That's obviously changed a lot since, since the days when I went to school. You have a lot of new tools, social media, but also being savvy about social media, that that doesn't solve all your problems. Um, how to manage the entre entrepreneurship process, so kind of project management, implementation of these ideas, so how do you get there, and how to make your business um, safe and eco-friendly, good for the environment. We talk about something called triple bottom line, so the company should be good for making money, obviously, that is the ba basic reason for companies to exist, but also be good for society. You had heard about the corporate social responsibility. So this is a related a topic and also good for the environment. So circular economy, being sustainable, and also thinking about the future generations. We will be celebrating your work. As you said, that's a very important part to also have fun here. It's not just, uh, it's not school. It kind of can feel a bit like school, but it should be something we're doing involuntarily that's something we really actually want to learn and do. And the project. In the end of the session today, I will introduce you to the project. But let me first introduce you to this Menti. This is the tool that we will be using. So what I would like you to do right now is really talk about, think about those expectations that we mentioned. And um, sorry, I don't know what is this. Uh, sorry, this is the... So um, I'm going to show you how you can uh, access this Menti. So this is like a voting tool. So take your phone or laptop, whatever you have, um, your um, tablet and go to www.menti.com and enter this code uh, down here. Or you can also scan this QR code here. So remember the question we will be now discussing is what is your expectation for this course? So those who are already online, you can start thinking about that. And uh, for the others, uh, let's give it a little time. So everybody gets this code down or you can use the QR scanner. We will be using this again. So Please just go online. Don't think that this is just one off thing and then it goes away. You don't have to bother. So yeah, I would like to hear from you all. So let's try to get everybody's everybody on Menti. Menti.com code 212669. I don't know. I'm not so savvy with everything. I'm thinking, can I see or I check on the chat also if there's any questions? All right. Let's expect that everybody is now on. 
back on my team. So what are your expectations for the camp? And uh, I didn't want to make it open-ended question. There would be so many. So I gave you three options. So one, learn about entrepreneurship generally. Be ready to launch a new business. I will be asking you later if you actually want to go for it, if you're really serious about starting a business. And so this would be this, uh, this uh, second option. And the third option was that you're specifically interested in one topic or module. So I understand that maybe legalities, maybe sustainability, one of these topics is something that you're mostly interested in. But good, many of you are interested in entrepreneurship generally. So these are basic skills. And even if you don't start your own business, even if you end up working in a big, large organization, you should still have these skill sets. You should still know how to come up with ideas, how the process of starting a business actually works. So these are kind of transferable general skills. So this is a term called intrapreneurship. So entrepreneurship is about starting a business. Intrapreneurship is about applying the same kind of thinking and uh, processes in a large company. Very good. I like the fact that almost everybody has answered, uh, especially, so very good start. And yeah, it's very interesting to see that, yeah, these two categories are really uh, showing the most interest. So learning generally or really starting your own business. All right, so let's get started a little bit. So this is our first module, the key topics of today. We talk about ideas and um, it really, innovation starts with an idea, but there is something called innovation funnel. And it is kind of like filtering the ideas and there are good ideas and there are bad ideas. Some ideas are easy to implement, some not so much. So there's a saying that 90% of the ideas don't make it to the market. So it's really a numbers game. So more ideas you know, the more you have to work with, the more chances you have of success. So let's say 10% of the ideas make it to the market. Only maybe 3% of them are actually successful. So out of 100 ideas, only maybe three of them, maybe even less, will become some commercial success. So that's also good to keep in mind when you start in this business. People will fail. Failing is fine. Failing early, failing smart are some of the terminologies that we use. So fail before you are losing too much. You also have to have an exit strategy. So if you think that this is not working, even you invested a lot of money, maybe you fell in love with your idea, you have to be able to walk away if it's just not working. We talk about something called customer value proposition. So this is what you have to think that, what value do I give to my customer? We're not doing this for us, we're doing it for customers. So what do I give to my customer? Why would the customer come to me instead of somebody else? So this is the key concept in, in this um, entrepreneurship. We introduced two uh, kind of tools. One is called design thinking process. It is kind of really a customer driven um, process of coming up with business ideas. And the business model canvas. We talk about business models, so how to make money, all these things. We also talk a little bit about ethics, but I think that's more of a topic of some other modules. What we will do today, also we think about telling you how we get into these teams and how we're going to be dividing you into these project teams and how to come up with a good idea. So these are the key topics of today. And let's start with a little uh, discussion. I'm also trying to now go into the chat. I'm not very good with that, but let's see how that works. So what is entrepreneurship? So think about that yourselves as well. So here it says the, let's say the definition that is focused on developing knowledge, skills, and understanding of how innovative creative ideas, products, and processes are going to the market. So it's really kind of individual process. When we talk about entrepreneurship, like in research, mostly it studies the entrepreneur, the person who is doing it. A lot of the research is focused on the characteristics of an entrepreneur, what kind of skills they need, and of course, then this very early stage process. So today we're talking about like really the first things you have to do to become a businessman, even like before you start your business. But let's see, what would you say if I came to you asking a question that what is entrepreneurship? 
But please put in the chat what kind of things would you come up with? I'm starting to see the chat, but I can't. Okay. Concept of developing and managing business ventures to gain profit, very good. Important topic is the profit. It's not a hobby. This is um, for money. Individual thinking, developing skills to start initiative. Drawing people, yeah, how to get people to you. Can you imagine the biggest reason why entrepreneurs fail is that there is no demand for their products? To me, that's a really a strange notion. Like, why would you start bringing up ideas and products that nobody wants? So obviously you have to do some market research and test your ideas first. And then, yeah, attracting customers. So sometimes when you bring up something completely new that doesn't exist in the market before, you even have to create the need. This is something you see with the social media. That was something completely new. It didn't exist. We didn't need it. We think we didn't need it. But now that we have it, we can't live without it. So it is really creating a need. This is something that the entrepreneurs also have to be able to do it. Very good. So let's move on. Uh, so let's talk a little bit on uh, Menti. Uh, now then, you should just type three words. And let's see what we come up with. So my question to you is, why is entrepreneurship important? You can think about it in a national level. Like, think, why does UAE invest so much in entrepreneurship? Why do we have so many courses on it? There is hackathons. We have countless innovation contests. So why? Why, why do they want to do this? Why, especially in the UAE? Saving the future, very good. Coming up with something new. A lot of times, small businesses are more agile. They are faster uh, than big businesses. So they can fill in some niche areas that might not be interesting for big businesses. Solving problems. Very good. Solving societal problems, creating future, improving standards very well, creating jobs, being helpful, um, having economic growth, very important. One thing here in the UAE, especially why it's important now, is what we call diversification of economic base. So that means the kind of post oil era. So oil is running out one of these days, so we have to be prepared for something new. So entrepreneurship doing this. Opportunities, new modern thinking, better economic life. You can make a fortune, yeah, hopefully, sometimes, sometimes not. But let's keep, uh, send a couple of minutes reading what we have come up with. Trade globally, gain profit. Be first. Very good. This keeps coming in. We will record all these so you will get them also for your future uh, reference. Build communities, very important. That's the new business model, P2P, person to person. Very good. So let's move on. So there's basically three key ways to become an entrepreneur. You can buy a business, you can franchise a business, or you can create one. So let's start first by buying one. I'm going to show you one of these websites that I have noted here. This is Business Exchange Bureau in, in Dubai. And this is a platform where you can sell your business. You can find investors or sell assets. For example, you have business assets that you don't need anymore, like computers or something. Or wanted, if some people are looking for businesses, so you can go here and say what kind of business you want. So basically, there are ideas. Let's say there's a restaurant. Oh, let's say fitness equipment trading. It costs uh, 3.8 million. It's expelling a little bit there. It's saying that what is the reason why they're selling what is the business overview, key products and services, reasons to buy, why should you buy this? What is their net assets? How much money they're making? They make 5 million last year. And they made 10% profit. 
so it looks like a good business. But yeah, I would be curious to know, so why are they selling it if it's such a good business? So obviously this is giving you the highlights only about the business, but you do have to do the due diligence and really find out. And as you see, these are like some millions, but some of them are really cheaper. So they're corporate sports and equipment, only 300,000. Total assets is already 400,000. So as, as assets, they mean what the company owns. They already have uh, more assets than the price. And the reason is one of the partners is relocating. So it's interesting, you could go there and uh, you could have a look like what kind of businesses there are and think about buying an ongoing business. It might be easier option for a new uh, startup because you don't have to start it from the scratch. So let's talk about that a little bit on the chat. So why would you buy a business instead of starting your own? Or why not? So the question was, why would you buy a business instead of starting one? I don't know why my chat is not coming up now. All right. Well, I would say the key reason is that it might be easier for you to get started. And the business is ongoing. You have existing customer base assets. So you're kind of taking a shortcut. But the negative is it might not be your passion. And there's always some issues with businesses. They wouldn't sell them if they are absolute gold mines. So that's also good to keep in mind. The second way of starting your business was franchising. I think if you think about KFC, McDonald's, these are the most uh, popular franchises. So this is a franchise.ae website. And uh, there is a lot of businesses here for franchising. You can go ahead and have a look. Um, there's a lot of restaurants, gyms, broadcast academy, hostels, hotels, digital content, chicken express, these kind of things. And how this process works is that they are asking you to make a proposal. It is a competition. So they are selecting the best one. So you have to see which business is, is most potential. And then you have to have some, actually some experience and um, some, something to show that why should they give this franchise to you instead of somebody else? So this might be hard for a young entrepreneur. So it might be easier to go with buying one or starting with your own business. It might be hard to win the proposal on the franchisee unless you have some very unique idea there. So let's go with the uh, option three, creating your own. So first question is, is any of you planning to start your own business in the next five years? Let's go in the Mentimeter as well, again. Not sure, yeah, that's kind of in the middle. Let's see how many entrepreneurs, five years is quite a long time. So you might feel that you would be a different person after five years. You might already have your university degree you know, or five years of work experience, who knows? Wow, yes, but later, that's a good one, a good option. On a tree say no, let's try to convince you to change your mind during this, in this course as well. Wow, we have 30 entrepreneurs already. Yeah, we will be talking about interesting uh, topics like, um, for example, is entrepreneurship for everybody? It's not for everybody. It's fine. It's not everybody can be an entrepreneur, maybe. Well, who knows? Maybe they can. There's so many different ways of doing it. Very good. So what does it take to be an entrepreneur? Um, there's, like I said, there's no one archetype. There's so many different types of entrepreneurs. But these are some of uh, the characteristics that are associated with entrepreneurs. So enthusiasm, you have to be passionate. If you're not passionate, nobody else will be passionate about your idea. 
you have to have some good imagination. Risk taking, I would call calculated risk, not foolish risks. It's not about putting all your eggs in the one basket. You have to have also, like I said, exit plan, exit strategy. You have to be open-minded, curious, action-oriented, strong-willed. It is a bumpy road. And like I said, actually there is a saying that 60% of the companies don't make it. And what we mean make it is that after two years of the starting them, they don't exist anymore. So this is the kind of way measure that we measure in companies is that if you're still existing after two years, you can consider yourself a success. Courageous, that goes with strong willingness, a self-renewal, maturity, very important, and passion. I would say maturity in terms of taking feedback. So the first thing is that if you get feedback, you don't listen to it. You think you know better. I'll give an example. Uh, I had a student who has his business idea and I set up a meeting with them and Khalifa Fund for finding funding and support to really start his business. And he presented his idea, a similar pitch that we are asking you to do here. And uh, he got some feedback, it wasn't very good. They didn't really like his idea. And the student get mad and start defending his idea. He was really like, no, but you don't, maybe you don't understand my idea. This is an excellent idea. And we're like, mm, this is not the way to go about it. You have to be able to take the feedback. And this is kind of the, really the difference. Like if you go into innovation or research competitions, we hear a lot of like praise for our ideas that how they could they're great and so forth. But when we really go into the market, it's actually very good to point out those weaknesses. Then you know what to focus on and how to improve. So yeah, it's really, you will not hear praises, not much praises. You hear more criticism. You have to be mature enough to take it in the right way, listen to it, and use it for your own benefit for improving your idea. But let's ask this interesting question. What do you think? I kind of hinted to it, but I don't even know. I don't know the answer to this, so I'm not saying this right or wrong answer. But what do you think? Can anybody become an entrepreneur? Is it for anybody? or not everybody. Yeah, we see at least in the beginning, no seems to be the biggest one. Yeah, I think it, it really asks you to step out of your comfort zone. So maybe that's not for everybody. Some people like to have strict guidelines, templates, rules, uh, standard procedures. And obviously as, a, as an entrepreneur, you don't have any of that. So for some people, it might be too much. It might be stressful that you don't enjoy the ride. You don't enjoy being in that kind of, let's say, mindset. But I would also say, not sure. Um, I, in a way, I would be inclined to say that or yes as well, because uh, there's so many different ways. Like you can have a partner. If you are not that extrovert, like Richard Branson, and you don't, in, and you don't enjoy going out and talking to people and uh, marketing, selling your ideas. You can have somebody else do it. You can be the silent partner, the one there in the background. They, they always say that you need somebody who's more, let's say, extroverted and have these crazy ideas, but then you need somebody who's really tedious about details and really implementing them. Even Steve Jobs had his second, who was more into the implementation where he was into the ideation. But majority here says no. And yeah, maybe we can have more discussion on that later, but I think maybe it really is, it can be too much for some of us. So what do you need to know? So sometimes we don't even know what we need to know if we just don't know. So what are the uh, hard skills of an entrepreneur? So like I say, you can start with an idea and uh, go through the process, but it can, be, it can be very hard and you will have a lot of roadblocks. So it might be better to really have some training as well, either practical training or academic courses, whatever you feel you need. So there are actual skills and competencies, for example, for coming up with ideas. It is a process and we get better at it as we train. Again, I give an example on this. Um, when I run workshops, for example, for our faculty and our, our staff, at the university. I often do this exercise. You could try this at home, it's quite fun. 
that think about 50 ways to use a watch or 50 ways to use a belt or 50 ways to use a pen, 50 ways to use the shoe, whatever everyday object. And obviously something else than what they're meant to form. For example, shoe, you can use it for gardening, you can use it for cooking, you can use it for um, counting, anything. You can use it as a class for drinking, pretty yucky idea, but still. So when I get this kind of exercise, I have some faculty who is dealing with innovation, who's dealing with ideas in their daily work. They come up with 30 ideas, boom, like this. Maybe it takes them some time then to come up with 20 more to fit the 50. But then I have students or faculties who don't do this. They come up with maybe 10 ideas and then they're like, hmm, what else? So it is a process and this practice. Practice makes perfect also in ideation. So practice, practice and you will come back. Also, think about your own process. So how do you think about it? Like I could think about this uh, ways of using a pencil. I would think about every room in my house. So how could I use this in the kitchen? How could I use it in the office room? How could I use it in the backyard? Or you could think about your journey during the day. How could I use this when I wake up in the morning? and during the day, in the evening, and so forth. So what is kind of your own process? We talk about recognizing opportunities. So this is one of the skills of an entrepreneur. So walk with your eyes open. So when you walk out there, look around you with the eyes of an entrepreneur and see what kind of business opportunities I can see around me. Think about COVID. What kind of opportunities is that bringing? Really? A lot of businesses are, are, are now failing, but also a lot are gaining during this pandemic. Financial analysis, very important. If you don't have it, if you have skills, I would recommend you to also uh, then outsource it, use professional company to do it for you. We know, need to know about business planning something we do during this course and about articulating ideas. So how do you share your idea once you get it? So let's start with ideas. I would actually like to uh, start with a um, little questions to you. So there are good ideas and bad ideas, but can you give me some examples of good ideas? Right now, during this COVID time, during all these new technologies and social medias, I'm not stealing your ideas, so don't, don't worry about that. And you can also keep it a secret if you feel that. Let's see, what would be good ideas? Where could you make money and opportunities? No idea. Oh my God, we need to get better than that. Let's try to hit at least 30 ideas. Cute things, right? Digital support, home service. Everything delivered to home is good right now. Glass, yeah, smart glass, intelligent glass, medical equipment, masks, yeah. Online art. Yeah, I think jewelry, clothes, painting, everything like this. Food, yeah. See, we are really hitting like, um, Let's say the basic needs, that's always something. We all need to eat. We all need uh, something. And also then uh, something visuals. So that's one in the Maslow hierarchy of needs. We need art. We need some ways to also beautify our lives. So nail salons, clothes, art. Mental well-being, very important right now. Selling parts, yes, also the maintenance. I mean, you have to live, think about the whole life cycle of products. It's not only about, you know, always coming up with something new, like waste collection, recycling, doesn't sound very inspiring, but those are very important areas. Sleep calculators, oh. Insurance, yes, car maintenance. Hand sanitizer, yeah, very nice ideas coming from 
from um, the COVID. So, yes, so where do these ideas come from? So one big idea is really this uh, solving problems. You say that if you can solve a problem, you're really creating them some value. And this problem can be just a way to do some things better. So like if you used to do like, we used to go shopping, for example, but how about then shopping comes to you? So online shopping, home deliveries, saving time, saving money. Find out what is the current hot trend. I think you are young, you know this trend better than me. But yeah, I think those are some of them, the food, food, cute things, these kind of things. I think these uh, sanitizers, these kind of things, and ven ventilators are kind of solving the problems. Improving product that is already on the market. So we always have frustrations. And something like add a service maybe to a product, that would be good or create a new niche for current product. This would give, for example, gym for old people or phones for babies. So something uh, for a new target market, existing product, but for new uh, target market. Re-incarnate an older product. That's one. So something that we forgot that exists already. So revamp it. I mean, like it's an old example already, but mountain bikes. Like by cycling wasn't very hot, so then they make mountain bikes to make it more appealing for young people. And ask customers. I mean, usually people who use these products, they know the better. If I was supposed to do something on medical equipment, I would definitely go ask the nurses, ask the doctors. They have so much ideas. So most ideas come from the customers. And this is something that the companies are already testimonying that most good ideas come either from the suppliers so those who are really dealing with these technologies every day or from the customers. But I always like to bring these ideas up about like social needs. So solving some problem that is bigger than yourself and making meanings with your company. So not just that it, your basic idea as an entrepreneur when you ask for funding or you're trying to introduce your ideas, I want to be rich. That doesn't resonate so well with people, but it says I want to cure cancer that sets completely different tone already for your business. You can try to um, help demographic shifts, like all the online things. How can we solve these issues? Cybersecurity, safety overall. So if you can tap on some of these societal problems, we talk about social innovations, and these would be the social innovations. It can be for profit or for non-profit for the governments and so forth as well. But how to come up with ideas? So one is these observations. Really look how people are doing things and what kind of issues they have. Think about what we call customer journey. So what is their journey in, in the supermarket, for example? Do they have hard time finding? That's a big idea now, these intelligent shops, that they maybe there's some kind of app that helps you find the things tells you more about the products, their nutrition, calories, meal planning, these kind of things. So observe where people have issues. Good example is also like airports. You know, how could we navigate better, save time, be safe right now, especially with the social distancing. Second one, um, socialize outside your normal circles. So that's where you can get ideas. So take a different route in life. Attend these webinars that you never thought about would be for you. Something, it doesn't have to be something too dramatic. You also say sometimes travel alone. Because when you're alone, you get to talk to different kinds of people and do something that you wouldn't do if you travel with your family or with a friend. Read books. That's my process, definitely. If I am, for example, supposed to write an article, I would start by reading. So what are the others known already about that? What is the common and the latest information? So with that, I can see how can I add to the existing knowledge. Randomly surf the web. I'm sure all of us do that already, but yeah, you have to have some kind of target in mind for that. Keeping journal. I always uh, encourage my students to keep journal. So seeing um, how your thinking is developing also. 
meditate, very important. Going in, being honest to yourself, uh, go into your deeper thoughts, maybe do yoga, be quiet, do nothing. That's one thing I learned from our Stanford course that we did for our um, collaboration for our innovation courses. They had one, uh, one hour a week when they do completely nothing. They have to be like maybe in a dark room, with the eyes closed for one hour, do absolutely nothing. And what we heard from the faculties there is that that's actually very difficult. People are very much looking into their phone, you know, but leave that phone home for that day and just do nothing. Or use structured exercises. There are some frameworks. One is called from the scamber. So S, C, or you can do A, B, Cs, thinking about ideas starting with A, ideas starting with B. You can have this kind of, uh, let's say, framework that you can use with your ideation. So we already had a look into the ideas. Let's see if we have still something else. Let's try to pick up a couple of them here. And now I'm trying to really actually go into my chat because I had some issues with that. But let's do a little voting. Or do you think which one of these ideas are really good? So what would you consider good ideas? I don't understand why, sorry. See, maybe like this I could see. I don't know. At least I get to the Q&A. Maybe if you write in the Q&A, because that is something apparently I can read. So what ideas did you like from the others? There's good ideas. I, I will also answer some of these questions so we get a little break from my, my talking, hear it from you also. If I want to make a business, should I be famous? Uh, I would say in your own community, yes. So we sometimes say that if I want to sell a book, for example, I want to have a blog or something, some kind of social media presence. So people believe in me. They think I have some good ideas and then they get interested in me and they want to read my book. So yes, you have to kind of sell yourself because the new companies do identify with the owner. You are the company. So people have to know you, respect you, know what you know and see um, well, famous might not be, but you have to be known, you have to be critical. The main points in business, I would say this customer value, providing value, whether it's utility value, whether it's aesthetic value, like Rolex has the value of or Gucci, aesthetic value is as important that is the utility value. Knowledge and skills solution or critical demand by locals or internationally. Yes, you have to define your target market. I think in the module three, you will be talking about customer segmentation. So you have to know who are your primary, who are your secondary customers and focus on those. Not everybody is your customer. Like I'll give an example here, like, you know, in, in the malls, they have these people selling your car, uh, washing the car. So you're thinking, are they for everybody? I said, no, if somebody has a Rolls Royce, they don't want those guys to watch their car. So is it for regular customers? Would you explain how to build my own business from the scratch? Yes, we will be talking about that. And then we come into the products. So ventilators, homes, uh, nail salon. Yeah. Ventilators overall are a good idea because um, there is a global shortage of them, but it's also very difficult. I mean, getting into ventilator business really requires a lot of approvals. Non-profit organization get money. You have to get some kind of business model even for that because obviously people who work there are not there for charity. They also need to get uh, their salary. VR video games, yes, I think everything VR. TikTok, yes, very good channel right now. Right now, I think not in the future. I think it will be congested. Food truck, yes, design, creativity, being different. Yes, very good. 
culture brand. Yeah, I think cultural heritage is also big on baking. Yes. Bamboo as plastic replacement, very good. I think unfortunately now with COVID, we have come back to plastic a lot more. Bags, everybody loves bags, costumes, eco-friendly things, yes. AI, very good. Yeah, very up and coming and trendy. There's a lot of application areas for that as well. Masks. And yes, wall decorations. Very good, okay. Very good, yeah, I was very happy to see you coming up with all these ideas, thank you very much. So let's move on a little bit. So the next question, how do I know if my idea is good? So we have to really think about this customer value now. So why would the customer buy this? Is it giving them something that doesn't exist anymore? Or is there big barriers for changing? And this is something that companies can also build on. Like let's say Apple, there's a people who love Apple. They have the whole suit of Apple products. There's a big, let's say barrier to change from that to something else. Then you have to change all your products, your phones, your computers, everything. And maybe there's a lot of, of your data there already. So it has the value of having this kind of synergies. But what is this value? It can come in so many forms, but usually quality, especially for branded goods, we accept something. It's called brand promise. So we are willing to pay more for brand because we think it's gonna be durable. If I go to Daiso and I pay one dirham for something, I'm not expecting it to last forever as well. So what are the advantages for owning this? It will it improve my, let's say, it will save me time. That's one value. It gives me an image. I'm part of a group if I'm having this product or something. It's this brand affiliation. Maybe it solves some problems, gives me an experience like gaming. Uh, success from the use of the product, so I become better in something. So it will help me with something or some long term giveaways like education. Education is actually very trendy and hot business right now as well. But let's think about this value. So what kind of values there might be? And um, it can be, yeah, I think the key category is really saving time, saving money, improving something. It'll be about the image. It can be about helping me make money. Partnerships, very important, can be coming up with this. So how do we know, how, how is this market proofing done? So that is basically done by market research. And maybe you remember from other studies about primary and secondary data. So secondary data is the data that is already there. So you should read market reports. You should read uh, about what is already known about this. And then you could do uh, some sampling research. You could do uh, surveys, interviews with your potential customers. Even just uh, your family members, ask them what do they think. Early feedback is very, very important. I'll give an example. So now they actually already announced that there will be a metro coming to Abu Dhabi. But how would you know is metro a good idea in Abu Dhabi? And uh, how would you know if people would use it? Where would you start looking for information? What do you think? I'm trying to go back to the <laughs> chat. I'm sorry, I'm so clumsy. What would you, where would you start studying this kind of topic? Would there be potential, can you make money with the metro in? in uh, I'm going to Q and A because I can answer this. So where would you go looking for ideas? Um, where would you go looking if people would use Metro? Or where would you find out about the use patterns and how much would it cost and how much would people be willing to pay for it? I'm looking at the Q&A, sorry, I don't know why I can't go to the chat. Googling it from the consumers, new sites, yeah. 
I think I would I would start by maybe um, studying the metro in Dubai because it's in the same market, similar kind of um, user profiles. Of course, the geographics is a little bit different, so that's also, but it's quite new. So I would check how much did it cost to set the metro up in Dubai? What kind of people are using it? What are the peak hours? How many users? Is there more demand or less demand? And then I would kind of extrapolate that for the Dubai, uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe the distances are longer. How would that come into question? Very good. But you, in a market, we have what we call external analysis. Maybe some of you studied business already. We talk about pestle analysis and we talk about industry analysis. So we want to see how many people are there who have the same need. So what is the size of my potential customers? And who are my customers? Is it business to business or business to consumer? How many are they? Who are they? Because if you think about marketing, marketing is very expensive. Even with the social media, there are costs and you have to optimize your websites. So you have to be very targeted. Think who is my customer? Focus on them only. Not on those who will not buy from, buy from you anyway. Think about the competition. Like food trucks are great, but I think it's very full market. I think there's too many food trucks already. And it's, it's like everything. When there's a good idea, everybody jumps on board. So we also have to know when it's too congested at market and think about doing something differently. Sometimes it's good to be the second, maybe the first one in the market got all the problems and all the quality issues. So the second ones in the market will actually do much better. But you have to be smart about it and see if there's too much, then the market is ruined. Price breaks, so how much are people willing to pay for it? It might be a great idea, but people are not willing to pay so much for it. So then you just can't make money with it. And this can be an issue with the ventilators, for example. Like we would like to have our own ventilators at home, but they might be too expensive. Culture and norms. This is, I think, a great way to build some good ideas, especially here in the UAE. So think like if I'd have a good VR game, for example, so why is not Sony or Google already doing it? So you can also think that if it's such a good idea on market, those big players will come, they will make it better. They will, they will buy your business or they will uh, take the market over. So if you think about something cultural, maybe something in Arabic language, something Google can't do because they don't know. They don't know so intimately the culture here. This could be a great idea for you. Purchasing patterns. So how are people buying things? What are the hot trends, as you see, and business cycles? Every business has a cycle. First, it's very exciting. Everybody's hopping on board, but then it's starting to slow down. The products are starting to be less attractive for people. And then it's time to do something else. But these are the market analysis. This is what we need to do. We have to make sure that we have an idea. We have to make sure there are customers for it. And then that we can provide some value for the customers. I'm going to introduce you now to two tools and then we go to the project. Somebody was already asking when are we finishing? So maybe it's getting a little bit long, but I'm going to introduce you two tools uh, on how you can start your business. So somebody was asking like, what is the end to end process on starting your business? And uh, we will go through that during this whole course. So I'm not going through every step today. And then we will talk about the process and the project. And the project is really kind of putting it all together and coming up with the business plan. So design thinking, this is like very customer oriented way of coming up with the business and a business idea and market proving it. So we start with something called empathy. So understanding, really going into head of your customer. And I would like you to maybe think like describe in terms of different attributes that who is your customer? Where do they live? How old are they? Uh, what do they like to do? How much money are they willing to spend? How often would they use your product? And so forth. So for example, a rest restaurant, how much are they willing to pay for it? How often would they come? Like what is the customer value for you in a year? And what do they like? What do they appreciate? Is it a cheap price like McDonald's 
convenience, fast delivery, or are they willing to pay more and get something really unique? So you're starting really thinking about that, thinking what do these people really want? How can I deliver them this value we're talking? So going into the head of your customer, step into the shoes of your customer. And why this is important is that we might think that there's a good idea and everybody will like it, but really think why, why, why? This is one technique, thinking five whys. Why do they like it? Why would they buy it and why? And why do they do what they do? Then you define in more um, detail, what is this product that I'm actually doing? Uh, what is this really the issue that I'm solving? And what am I really selling? There might be so many different ways of solving a problem. And I give one example. Um, if you listen to radio, there's always traffic jam between Georgia and Dubai. And we might think that, okay, so let's put some more lanes and then that will solve the problem. Or let's put the cars in two levels up and down, so there's more lanes. But what if we don't even try to solve the problem of too many cars there? We take alternative thinking and think, why are there cars there always at nine o'clock? Because they go, people are going to work. And there's another traffic jam at five and they're coming back. So what if the employers and government offices agree that some start to work at seven, some start at eight, some start at nine? So we're kind of dividing the traffic load instead of just doing the more of the same. So this is kind of alternative thinking. This is how we can really define what problem are we really solving? Then there's this ideation. We have to come up with a lot of ideas. Here we call something deferred judgment. So don't judge. You should never say that some idea is bad. Just come up with as much of the mass, like I say, and then we start filtering just later. Maybe we select three ideas for prototyping. So we kind of build them. I know you may be familiar with the process you've done it in some, maybe like a rough paper copy or make something with Play-Doh to see how would this actually work? How would this all come together? And then you're testing this, let's say with some friendly users. And maybe it doesn't work or you see that some parts work, some doesn't. And then you go back to the prototyping phase and, and then introduce it to the market. I give an example of this uh, testing. So I had a student who was into swimming and all kind of aquatic sports. And he thought that um, it would be good to do like, um, like water therapy, like physiotherapy in water. So if you have like in, in injury in your knee, you can't do everything. So you can get it back in shape in water. And he thought there's a lot of pools. Everybody has access to water. That would be a good idea. He worked for two for 54, so he went to his work and he asked 100 people, so would you do something like that? Would that be a good idea? And they liked the idea, but they thought it would be better for exercise, not just for rehabilitation, but for exercising. So we should do more water aerobics and something like this because it's hot to exercise outside. So why not do it in the pool? So the original idea was kind of modified. And with that then, the better ideas and better um, access for, better ideas and better uh, success potential. But this is a good process. So I think if you start um, with the first step of your uh, business cycle is really start empathizing with your customers, start thinking, what do you think uh, deliver for them and testing that with the market. Do your research. And this is actually kind of pre-startup phase. So all this should be done before you start investing money and effort in this. The second thing I would really ask you to do, um, if you want to get started, is this thinking of how do I make money? Like when students introduce the idea, I often I ask them, so how much does it cost? You have to be able to come up with that first, in the first discussion with your uh, partners or funding agency. You have some kind of game or a gadget or let's say nail salon at home. I would ask, okay, so because you come to my home, how much is the manicure going to be? We talk about business, we talk about money. Very, very important. And this would be a very good way of starting your project as well. So this is why I'm introducing this idea. And this what I show you right now is called Business Model Canvas. And it should be like a visual snapshot of your business. 
So I would ask you to maybe this, use this as your very first tool in your business planning process. It has nine different columns and we should always start from the right hand side. I mean, usually we spend one hour explaining business model canvas. So this is a really a run through, but I'm telling you how to, what is the logic of this and why you should use this. And as I mentioned, I would, I would ask you to do this also for your project. Maybe start with this when you first meet with your project team. So start in the middle, value proposition. What is your value proposition? In this template, we have a couple of uh, questions that are guiding you. And if you can answer these questions, I think you're already in a good, good place. I'll give you a moment to read through the questions. So what value are you giving? What are the products you're giving? Next, we move on the right and look at the customers. So who are my customers? Channel is how do your customers get your product? Is it online, in a shop and so forth? Customer relationship, how do you take care of your customers? Like after sales in the long term, do you have some loyalty programs? And the right here, revenue streams. So where do you actually get money? What are the customers paying for? It's like a menu in a restaurant. So where do you get money? Is it subscription, pay as you go, through ads, whatever it might be. So the right hand side is saying, what kind of value you do for whom and how do you make money? And the left hand side is how do you make this? So what are the activities and resources you need for doing this? What kind of partners you need and how much money will you make as uh, spent? on making this money. So right hand side, what are the activities, uh, what are the values where the money comes from? And left hand side is kind of internally in your business. What do you need to have in order to deliver this value? What do you need to have and what do you need to do? For example, if you're in recycling, you need to have a partner as a municipality. You have to have access to their trash, trash bins, you know, or if you're doing an app, you have to design the app, you have to have to market it, you have to do the graphical interface. So you have to kind of list the activities that you have to do. And the next one, I think this would be really answering your question on how do I start my business? This, I think, is a good for future reference as well. So this is from Bill Owlett. He's from MIT. He um, wrote a book called Disciplined Entrepreneur. If you have um, the chance, please have a look into this. It's a very interesting book and it's kind of like a comic book. It's making it very light, nice and lively, so it's easy to read. It's not like a 500 uh, page um, narrative. So he has divided the whole entrepreneurial process into 24 steps and kind of six categories. So first looking at who is your customer? And as you see, we are really focusing on this customer. It's really very much focus on thinking that you can't solve all the problems in the world. As an entrepreneur, you have to be very focused and focus on your key customers. And what we also say, who is your first customer? Who is your dream customer? Let's say I'm in the construction business, Aldar would be my dream customer. They're a big customer, they would buy a lot. It would be a great reference. It would increase my credibility. Everybody thinking it's Altar, trust them. Why shouldn't I? So first, thinking about the customer, there are nine steps what you should have. Think about your first customer and look at the step nine. Identify your 10 next customers. So take a piece of paper and think who will come to buy from you, either as a business or if you talk about consumer, think about customer profile, what kind of people there would be, like young people, old people, Maybe next you have a disabled people, so it can have some, um, uh, some special features that help with um, people with uh, some determination. And what can you do for your customer? This is the value. Why do they buy from you? There's always competition. Even if you have a new product, I always say that the competition is the existing product. Like mobile phone, the competitor was the landline phone. 
especially in the beginning, everybody still had those landline phones and they were cheaper. Next, how does your customer acquire your product? So this is the channel, remember in the, in the business model canvas. So these are very related. How do you make money? Very important. And you should really make some rough calculation. Sometimes you can't make money. And most companies don't make money the first year. It's completely fine. You will have a lot of startup costs. You will have a lot of marketing costs. You have to get out there in the beginning. But then let's say, how long can you go without making money? That's a question. Usually within a year, one and a half years, you really have to start making money. Or then you have this exit plan that when have you lost so much that you can't recover, any, recover anymore. Then how do you design and build your products? So are you also going to be producing it? You don't have to do everything yourself. Very important lesson for an entrepreneur. Like let's say I wanted to have some apps. I have a good idea about an app, but I don't know how to make apps. So I can make the specification and buy it from a professional company. They will do it for you. That's one opportunity. Then how do you scale your business? Very important. So how to get bigger, how to make more customers, how to grow, very important. I'm sorry, I think somebody's trying to call me. Let's wait for a minute. So here we see 24 steps. And this is all the steps that you make before you even start your business really. Because see the step number 24 is develop a product, product plan. So you start producing. This is all the things you have to do before you even start your business. And you can do that at any time. You can start tomorrow, even if you start think about starting your business only after five years, but you can do all this planning. Maybe you have to refresh your plan a little bit once you get closer, but you can always start and go through these steps, see where you have your issues, where you can, where you can um, answer easily, but which ones are difficult for you. And as you think about it, it, we call it incubation. It's like, you know, sometimes you are thinking about some problem, you can't find a solution, then you sleep over it, and in the morning, the solution comes to you. It's the same with this entrepreneurship and ideation. So the more you focus on it, you think about it, it, it will come. You have to trust, trust your intuition, trust your, um, your process. And yeah, so let's just plan, start planning. And if you have an idea, also don't get fixated on this idea that this is it and this is how it's supposed to be from the beginning to the end. It might be that during this process, you realize that maybe it's a good idea, but maybe for some other market or then maybe I have to adjust it a little bit and think about some additional services to go with it, something like that. So you have to be really agile and taking that feedback as mentioned. So little recap of the key terms today. We talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about ideation, customer value. I would underline that. Um, there's always the switching cost. So moving from one product to another why should they come to you? Market analysis. We talk about design thinking process, business model canvas, and then this entrepreneurial process, those 24 steps that was mentioned. All right, now I'm going to introduce you to the project. So we have this camp project, and this is very important part of this course. So please take this seriously. And I think this is a very good learning opportunity for you as well. So we are actually going to help you with this. We are going to uh, divide you into the teams of five projects. I'm going to introduce you to this form you should fill uh, for your area of interest. And you should fill this by tomorrow noon. I'm going to show you the process. Uh, uh, Dr. Hamad is going to send you this link. But I will show it to you. Here. So it's a summer camp, but it is the winter camp. So I am asking all of you to fill in, fill in this. 
you can fill it right now after or after this um, this session, or you can fill it uh, tomorrow by tomorrow noon. It's quite intensive. We don't have you too much time, but also it doesn't take you too long to fill this camp. So we would like to know a little bit about you. So what you are interested in doing. So put your first name, last name, your school, and you should select your area of interest. And then we will be dividing you into groups of five based on that uh, expression of interest. So let's say you are interested in robotics and uh, artificial intelligence. Maybe uh, we find that there is 20 other people who are interested in that. So then we will have four teams in the area of robotics. We have this important category of towards the next 50. You all know what that means. So what do we like to see implemented here in the UAE? And you could uh, put that. We have social innovation, do something good for the society. Education, especially now when we're going online, there's a lot of opportunities there. Edu, edu innovation, we call them. Hospitality, media, well-being at the COVID era, very important. And this can be in terms of like a mental health or some kind of a psychological services, or it can be medical equipment as well. So it's a very broad area or other. If your idea is something completely different, then if you already have a firm idea and it's not uh, going under any of these categories, please it include it into the others. So what you should do now before tomorrow noon, select one of these ideas. And then after that, like by tomorrow evening, maybe, we will then come up with your teams. We will send you an email with your team members. And in order to do things easier, we will also assign the team leader. We will assign somebody who is the leader and the responsibility of this leader is to call up a first meeting with the others. They will get the email so you can have a Teams um, meeting or Zoom or something with everybody. Agree on the process, how you will be working on this uh, project and uh, come up with an idea with the team. Or maybe somebody already has an idea, you can work with that. Or if you don't want to you know, waste your best idea, uh, keep it secret, that's fine as well. You can come up with something. And what you should do next is to create a business plan. In the very last session, we will be then presenting them. And as you see, unfortunately, we can't have everybody present because this is a huge um, class. We will select maybe six or seven teams with our faculty uh, panelists. We see what are really good ideas and we invite maybe six teams to present their ideas uh, in the last um, group and we will then award three winning ideas. So it's a bit of a competition and that is to increase your uh, level of ambition a little bit. I'm going to spend a little bit time on presenting the template that we use. And what we're using is a very classical, what we call business um, pitching or idea pitching template. So you should really imagine that you are a real startup company Put your company name, maybe you can design a logo for it. Then executive summary, what we say a wow descriptive, some kind of like um, text that want me to get me curious. Why do I want to listen to the rest of your presentation? It can be a question, it can be a, sl a slogan, it can be a statement. A very, very um, easy one might be like something like, did you ever wonder, or like, imagine if you could do this and this. So I'm like, whoa, yeah, I want to know what this is. So this would be then executive summary, telling about the problem opportunity. So a little bit of a background. So why are you coming up with this idea? And what is the advantage? What is your competitive advantage? Why are you better than the competitors? Then give some kind of visual, some kind of demo or graph of what is this all about? So I, I can I imagine that, oh, I understand now what it is. As we say, a picture speaks more than a thousand words. Then explain about your sales and marketing. How will you bring this up? How will you market it? And competition. 
What is the your competitors? Name a few real companies. What we can, they can't. So where are we better? But also be critical. You can't be better in everything. So what it can't, we can't. So where are you, you worse than they are? Then the business model. You can use business model canvas or explain otherwise. How are you going to make money? How much do you cost? We want to know that. And forecast. So how many customers and employees would you have maybe in the first year, second, up to five years? How much are you going to sell? How much money are you going to spend? And what is your profit? And like I said, it's completely fine to have negative profit. You don't have to have make money from day one. And the team, who's in your team? You can also like think who will be like the CEO, who will be the director of finance. So what kind of organization? How do you really implement this? This would be kind of the left hand side of the of the business model canvas. You could even put here like organizational chart if you like. So how does this all come together? How are you going to do this? I'm sure you will have a lot of questions now. So uh, this is it for today. That was the content. And this is now then um, the project. We will come up with more um, in instructions. So now, right now, the key topic for you is to identify here. Uh, this link will be sent to you uh, to identify what are the areas you're interested in. So we can start dividing you for the groups. And as soon as you find your group, you can expect to hear from the team leader. And if you're a very initiative taking person, of course, if you don't hear from the team leader, you can also call them or uh, call up a meeting. And the earlier you get to this ideation phase, the better, because I would say it's like 80% is coming up with a good idea. Then you have a great idea. After that, it's smooth sailing. It's much easier. But if you're struggling with the idea or the idea is not particularly good, it will be harder. And this is why we also would like you to submit the idea for us and we can maybe give some feedback on that idea. All right, very good. I am going to the questions and answers now. I'm trying to, I'm sure I can't answer everybody, but yeah, the form will be emailed to you. Maybe Omar, could you already maybe share this on the chat? So somebody can start already filling. You hear me, Omar? Uh, doctor, uh, doctor, you need to share the form, you mean? Yeah, so I think- The link, okay, okay. I'll just, uh, you can just, um, I'll just take control. Okay, all right. Thank you very much everybody by the way it's been a nice interactive session yeah good good interaction and it looks like you are pros using this menti there was no question everybody was online i think if you've been using kahoot or online learning this is really teaching teaching you on these tools i really think that if we had this session like a year ago we would be wondering on how to get online where do i get this code but now we're all very um let's say proactive and very um savvy these technologies already. All right, so Omar is... Um, yeah, I just placed the, um, the link on the form, uh, on the chat, so it's accessible from there. Okay, very good. So let's have a look into the chat. I think in the Q&A, the most questions are now really about the business and we don't expect you to really try to uh, start a business. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't like to start a business with people you never ever met. So this is, we are kind of simulating the process and uh, practicing. But if you are starting a real business uh, and re for real, if you really have an idea, these are the tools that you can use. And this is why we are teaching them here. So business model canvas, very important. And that 24 steps to entrepreneurship, that can be kind of a checklist for you. So you remember what kind of questions and what do I need to remember when I'm doing it? Think about the design thinking process, and we will be also introducing during this course some more tools. But really, even right now, you can start asking yourself, what is the customer value? What are the steps? Um, who do I need in order to bring this to the market? And who will be my customers? So it's kind of building up on your idea. I think we all have ideas, but in the beginning, they are just ideas. And as an entrepreneurship, it's all about bringing those ideas to the market. And 
thinking about how you make money on it. So take your business model canvas and start drafting just a piece of paper and, uh, and a pen and start doing this. Uh, we have a question, can you be um, part of the winter camp? Yes, of course. Yeah, I think it'd be very useful, um, not only for high schools, but also for, for others. Um, we will be having um, all the presentations. So I think we will share them after every, every um, class. So you can also review it then. And um, how many days it will take to make the groups? We try to make them tomorrow. And this is why we're already asking for you to, you to uh, answer by tomorrow noon. So as soon as we get that, um, we see who's really going to do this, who's serious about the course and, and coming up. You know, it's always people register, maybe they don't follow up, they don't come. So we don't want to put you into groups where then some of the students don't show up and you end up being alone or something. That would not be a good idea. Very good. Um, I'll take a couple of more questions. Um, considering the uncertainty of the global pandemic, how do you propose a business can maintain mission and vision? Good, very good question. Um, I was teaching this fall uh, entrepreneurial marketing class and I remember in, one of the courses, um, a student said that, oh, mission and vision is just blah, blah. It's some nice words, but nobody's really believing in them, especially now when they are, the businesses are really struggling. And, uh, and, and I said, well, yeah, maybe sometimes it can show like that, but then it's also maybe time to revisit the mission and vision. So if the vision are just some fancy words, like together, and everybody has innovation, by the way, if you look into every company's website, they have word innovation there. So are they really? Yeah, remains to be seen. But um, yeah, and that would be of course target to live up to your vision, your mission, to your noble principles, but not everybody does. Yeah, that is the, the reality. Yeah, the PowerPoint, yes, we will, we will provide the PowerPoint. What do you mean by media? Um, Media, uh, in terms of this program, this would be, for example, uh, like movie product, games, anything that 2454 is doing. If you're interested in filmmaking, uh, something like this, that would be, or digital media, uh, making uh, social media, something like that. There's also an interesting question was that, is now a good time to start a business with this pandemic? And I would say yes. Right now, businesses are cheaper. So if you have the cash and you have the time and you're serious about it, definitely now there's a lot more struggling businesses than before. I actually, I'm from Finland, I mentioned. So I went to my home country's um, business website and it is usually small businesses that don't have much um, cash flow, they don't have savings that were, were struggling. And a lot of them are there, good businesses, but they are for sale because the owner doesn't have money anymore. And these are especially like hairdressing, restaurant, these kind of one person businesses. And um, yeah, you could buy a perfectly good business by pretty good money. And also this pandemic will take some time before we recover. So anything that is a good business now, solving some of these issues that we are facing now, it will be in the years to come as well. At least a couple of years. Books can come under education, yes. How much does a business license cost? Um, the usual, I would say 20. There is so many different types of business licenses, so it's impossible. I think the very cheapest one starts at 6,000. But usually if you are in a free zone, you can even start by free. And uh, for young and innovators um, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi now, there's a lot of programs where you can get a business license for free. Even at the Abu Dhabi University, we have incubation program and we give licenses, we cover the cost of the licenses for our selected companies. Of course, it has to have potential. But if you go Googling it, for example, there are consulting companies and so on, and uh, very commonly it's about 20,000. And that comes with the visa, if you're not a national. But yeah, I think in the next session, Dr. Lina is already on, on board today. So you're talking about different uh, legal requirements. So this is also interesting question, this uh, legality. So 
uh, very strictly speaking, a lot of these online uh, businesses that we see are illegal. So selling on, on social media things is illegal and you don't get to pay the value added tax, for example. So it's of national interest as well. But there are exceptions to that as well. I think um, we would be very much done for today then. Uh, thank you very much for your questions. And like I said, I was really talking really about the pre-startup phase and the very first things you have to do when you're starting with your business. And as a recap, I would say that's planning. So well planned is half implemented. So anybody who is starting with the business, invest that time into planning and replanning and testing your idea and coming back to the drawing board and do it again. And all that before you start investing your mon more of your money. Time is money, of course, but more of your um, pure cash into your business. Very good. Uh, there was a question, can any country start a business? And our poll said no. So we didn't think that it's for everybody, but anybody can. Yes, if you are, um, you have to have um, some training, but not really anybody, even without any training, you can start a business. Yes, if you are 18 years old, you can you can start a business. And how do you know the team you are? We will be emailing you your teams uh, tomorrow. Let's say by tomorrow um, evening, I think definitely be okay. All right, um, thank you very much for the day. And uh, if there are more questions, we'll continue answering also in the follow-up sessions. Uh, I would like to you know, thank you for being here today, uh, offering your valuable time uh, for us. And as I mentioned already before, congratulating you for taking the, making the choice of being here. I have two boys in high school. I tried to get them to come here, but they're too lazy, so they're not. And maybe they didn't want to listen to me. They hear my voice too much already at home anyway. But it's really an investment for your future. You will learn skills that you can apply for any course that you do at school, also on the other terms. And of course, in the life in general. So that was my part. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, you will be continue with Dr. Abraham in the next session. And you can wait to hear from uh, Dr. Hamad and Kulud will be emailing you the link that is already in the chat and then your respective teams. Bye for now and have a good evening. And we look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you.